Today we're going to be replacing some screen that a dog jumped through. <laughs> Everybody has a rambunctious pet now and again who just can't resist the idea of jumping through a screen. Some of us even have husbands that'll go right through the screen <laughs> with a plate of drinks. And you know, you've got to excuse them for that because they're just being eager and eagerness is a good quality. Now, I just want to just mention tape measures. I love tape measures. I would collect them if it was a decent thing to collect. As it is, I have two. I have the 16-foot model and the 25-footer. Now, the 16 happens to fit in my hand. I really like the 16-er. But on job sites, any self-respecting contractor is going to carry a 25-footer. This thing is a laminated, um, a little piece of laminate that sticks on to the surface of the tape measure so that you can just take a pencil anytime you've taken a measurement and quickly write the number down and then just um, spit erase it or it even just rubs off with the heel of your hand if you're not into the saliva thing. So this is my favorite. They are all, they've got these little clips on, they belt mount. Look for a tape measure that has a good spring on it so that it retracts easily and you want the metal to be durable and not so thin that it'll just crack on you after a lot of this kind of measuring. See, when you're trying to get into a corner, you have to use it like this. That way there's less guessing. Okay, I'll put these babies aside for right now. And back to screening. Screening can be a very upsetting thing to try to do because the screen itself is usually aluminum. It's very um, flimsy. So I can't emphasize this enough. Set up your screening repair station in a very anal and decisive way. Now, let me just show you what I mean. See, these blocks are going to hold the screen square and in place so that when I'm working on the um, screening fabric it's not going to be walking all over the table. This is really important. So I've got a couple of them and uh, four of them and I'm just going to put the rest in. And these are just um, pieces of plywood cut up with a jigsaw just, or you can use any blocks of wood that you happen to have handy. Just to show you how screens are put together this um, screen frame, actually, we just bought some aluminum frame and started to put it together ourselves. But see, this little plastic corner piece just inserts into the channel because um, these things are hollow. They're, they're really quite lightweight. So that's how they're put together. So if you ever need to completely redo a screen and make it all new, you just buy the pieces of aluminum and you cut them down to size with a hacksaw with a metal blade in it. Okay, so now this thing is all put together. So I'm going to add the rest of the blocks. If I don't want to end up with a parallelogram, I have to make sure that I square the corners as I'm um, screwing these blocks in. So I'll just do that now. A lot of people would just use one screw, but these can walk around a bit, so I'm a two-screw girl on this uh, particular subject. This seems like total overkill, but you'll soon see why it's important to have the screen um, disciplined and ruthlessly so. Actually, the drama of the setup is, is, is going to completely outclass the non-drama of replacing the screen. Although, you never know quite what to expect. We're using vinyl screening. It's very lightweight and it tends to pucker a lot, so I might have spoken too soon. There could be drama yet. Screening material comes in three different materials, uh, vinyl and fiberglass and metal. 
vinyl is very flimsy, so it can take a bit more care to put in. On the other hand, metal can be a bear too, so they're all a bit tricky. If this was um, truly an old screen, this is what it would look like. This is called spline. Um, and, and the way it works is when you're pulling out the old screen, you have to get a hold of the spline, and sometimes it's really stuck in there. And if it's old, it might also be really brittle. So you have to dig in there and get an end of the spline and carefully pull it up out of the groove. And it can be really hard to get it started. I don't want to tear the vinyl, so you know what? I'm just take my word for it. It can be hard to get it started. And if it's brittle, it may break. So you have to very carefully pull it out of the groove. And um, if it does break, you need to buy yourself a bunch of of new spline. Okay, it's like this it's, uh, expanded thermoelastic stuff or something. I don't know what it's made out of, but it's kind of cool. It's like blown up stuff. All right, so you've placed your screen down on your work surface always with the interior side up. And the way you tell it's the interior side is that the groove is showing. And if you obviously are pulling out the old screen, you do that first. Then you lay the new screen down over the frame. And you should have an inch and a half to spare on each side, which we just barely made it with this piece. All right, this is a splining tool. This is a cool tool. It looks like a pizza cutter. One end has a convex wheel on it and one end has a concave wheel on it and if I could remember which is which I'd point them out to you convex that's this end so this is the, the convex end is the one that looks like a dull pizza cutter and then this concave end is is um, scooped in when you're using aluminum metal metal screening you you start with this edge it's a two-step process first you have to push the screening in to the groove if you're using aluminum, then you have to flip the, the tool around and use the convex end to push the splining in. Because vinyl's so flexible, you can do it in one step. So I'm going to start um, on a long edge so that I don't have to start on a corner. Um, and that'll be easy too, because when I, when I end it, it'll always be easy for the next person who has to replace the screen to pick up an end, because it's not jammed in a corner. Also, just just in case the screen kind of gets pulled, it's good to start with this being the short end, this um, edge, so that you've got lots left over up there if, you, if the screen, uh, if you get it crooked or if it sucks in a lot of the screening material. So I'll put my spline, just start it out in this crack here. And get it started. Now it, it puckers frightfully at first, but I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to work that out. Okay, so I'm just going to use short little rolling movements to push the spline and the screen in together. And I keep checking to see that I'm not going crooked with the screening material. So I'm, I keep some t putting tension on the screening here as I'm rolling along. Woo! Try not to run over your finger. That smarts. See, see why? See what? See the heartbreak I would have been suffering through right now if I hadn't put my screen in this nice frame so that it doesn't wander around. I'd be halfway across the garden, swearing and cursing and. It would have not been, not been a pretty sight. Okay, I'm at my first corner. So I get about half an inch to the corner and I can see how things are going. This is the point at which I pull out my scissors and not a moment before. Because what I want to do to make the corner easy is cut a diagonal corner off of here. So 
because otherwise it's going to pucker horribly and I'm not going to be able to work the material down into the corner. So that said, and now I'm turning my first corner so I've got to check that my screen is is um, flat as possible with no big puckers in it. Now I'm starting the spline in the, in the new groove but I need to make sure that it's um, pushed firmly into this corner. And then I'm getting good tension on this new line of screening that I'm about to start to push. So I want to be careful because I, I do need to keep pulling the screen, but I don't want to pull it clear off the other side. So keep your eyes on the big picture as well as focusing on getting a nice line of spline laid in the track. Final's kind of nice because it's stretchy. And where, where it's starting to pucker here, I can keep working the puckers out as I go around each of the three sides, four sides actually. Okay, so I come to half an inch from my next corner grab the scissors and cut off another diagonal piece of screening so that I don't have a puckery puckery corner. Executing the corner. Now, this is where you have to really start paying attention to puckers that might, might be occurring in your screening. Oh, just to show you what, what this would have been like. I mean, it's going really well. It doesn't take very long once you get started. If I didn't have my special frame that I so anally put together before we started, this is the kind of motion this would take on. Darn, 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 you'd be saying to yourself. And other things, too. Other stronger, stronger things. Darn! And you know, there's no point even in starting repair if you know you're going to get that frustrated and hypertensive by the end of it. I'll be putting this back in the frame. Sometimes you can pick up a bit of a pucker as you come around the last corner. I could probably have um, started this even a little bit farther over so I would have had a bit easier time of working this last bit of pucker out. But I'll just get it as taut as I can. And then right where I'm coming to the part where I started, I just make the tiniest little overlap. And cut it off with my scissors. And then the next person, which will probably be me, who has to repair this, can just find that end easily without having to go looking. All right, now the last thing to do is just trim the edges of the screen that are sticking up. Two ways to go. You can use a utility knife or scissors. If you use the utility knife, you 
and you don't have a very sure hand, you run the risk of tearing up this screening that you've already so delicately put in place. You can also score the aluminum. So I'm going to go with the cautious method, which is scissors. If I could get that thing going. Yeah. The zip cut. It's the floby of screen cutting. Huh? It's a bit tricky around the corners. You just want to make sure that you don't nip any of the the fresh screen. You know what I could use here? I just had a brilliant moment of illumination. If I clamp this screen down, then I, I won't have to be fighting it lifting up out of the frame, actually. Mondo clamp. I'll just take my clamps off. It's the beauty shot of the year. Yes, it's a perfectly placed screen. And I'm feeling pretty good about myself now, I might add. <laughs>